Alleluia. Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Alleluia. Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, your perfect love is casting out fear. Lord, you never let go of me. And even when I'm caught in the middle of the storms of this life, I won't turn back. I know you are near. Lord, you never let go of me. And I will fear no evil, for my God is with me. And if my God is with me, whom then shall I fear? Lord, you never let go of me. I can see a light that is coming for the heart that holds on, a glorious light beyond all compare. Lord, you never let go of me. That's adapted from a song you never let go. It's one of our praise band songs. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. <clears throat> We welcome you to worship as we gather this morning at Mount Calvary, and we are here on this third Sunday of Easter. The hymn, Thine is the Glory, is one that you can find on our Facebook or on website, and that's one that speaks about the joy of the resurrection of our Lord. Let's continue with the words of confession and forgiveness. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, who forgives all our sin, whose mercy endures forever. Amen. Amen. Almighty God, to whom, whom all, all hearts, hearts are open, open all, all desires, desires known, and, and from, from whom, whom no secrets, secrets are hid, cleanse the, the thoughts, thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, Spirit that, that we, we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Most merciful God, we confess that we are captives to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart, we have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways. To the glory of your holy name. Amen. God, who is rich in mercy, loved us even when we were dead in sin and made us alive together with Christ. By grace, you have been saved. In the name of Jesus Christ, your sins are forgiven. Almighty God, strengthen you with power through the Holy Spirit, that Christ may live in your hearts through faith. Amen. Let us pray. Holy and righteous God, you are the author of life, and you adopt us to be your children. Fill us with your words of life, that we may live as witnesses to the resurrection of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. A reading from Psalm 4. Answer me when I call, O God, defender of my cause. You set me free when I was in distress. Have mercy on me and hear my prayer. You mortals, how long will you dishonor my glory? How long will you love illusions and seek after lies? Know that the Lord does wonders for the faithful. The Lord will hear me when I call. Tremble then, and do not sin. Speak to your heart in silence on your bed. Offer the appointed sacrifices, and put your trust in the Lord. Many are saying, who will show us any good? Let the light of your face shine upon us, O Lord. You have put gladness in my heart, more than when grain and wine abound. 
In peace I will lie down and sleep. For you alone, O Lord, make me rest secure. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. A reading from 1 John chapter 3, verses 1 through 7. See what love the Father has given us, that we should be called children of God, and that is what we are. The reason the world does not know us is that it did not know him. Beloved, we are God's children now. What we will be has not yet been revealed. What we do know is this, when he is revealed, we will be like him, for we will see him as he is. And all who have this hope in him purify themselves just as he is pure. Everyone who commits sin is guilty of lawlessness. Sin is lawlessness. You know that he was revealed to take away sins, and in him there is no sin. No one who abides in him sins. No one who sins has either seen him or known him. Little children, let no one deceive you. Everyone who does what is right is righteous, just as he is righteous. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The gospel acclamation this morning is from Luke chapter 24, verse 32. Alleluia, alleluia. Alleluia. Our hearts burn within us while you open to us the scriptures. Alleluia. Alleluia. The Holy Gospel from Luke. Glory to you, O Lord. While they were talking about this, Jesus himself stood among them and said to them, Peace be with you. They were startled and terrified and thought that they were seeing a ghost. He said to them, Why are you frightened, and why do doubts arise in your hearts? Look at my hands and my feet. See that it is I myself. Touch me. And see, for a ghost does not have flesh and bones as you see that I have. And when he had said this, he showed them his hands and his feet. While in their joy they were disbelieving and still wondering, he said to them, Have you anything here to eat? And they gave him a piece of broiled fish. And he took it and ate in their presence. Then he said to them, These are my words that I spoke to you while I was still with you, that everything written about me in the law of Moses, the prophets, and the Psalms must be fulfilled. Then he opened their minds to understand the scriptures, and he said to them, Thus it is written that the Messiah is to suffer and to rise from the dead on the third day, and that repentance and forgiveness of sins is to be proclaimed in his name to all nations, beginning from Jerusalem. You are witnesses of these things. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. And let's invite the children to gather around. As we come here again beside the cross, today we have something here, and we're going to be blessing the mats later on. As we think about that, I would like you to know, tell me, what are the five senses that we experience? We can hear, we can see with our eyes, we can touch something beside us, we can taste, and we can smell. Those are all different senses. Now, we may have our favorites of each one of those things, a favorite thing to see or a favorite thing to hear. Well, for the individuals receiving that, it's a favorite thing to touch and maybe not touch because these will be going to homeless people and they will be using them as they lay down at night on the ground as a barrier between the ground and whatever it is that they're sleeping with. And so, 
it's not that they touch. And that's a good thing. That helps them. So, in our gospel lesson, the disciples were locked in a room. They were afraid. And Jesus stood among them and he said, peace. And they needed that peace. They needed that calm and reassurance. They needed to believe that it really was him and not just a ghost. <clears throat> and so he said, touch and see and watch me eat. Jesus is alive. And that is something very important. He is risen and we can praise God. And that truth that Jesus is alive is true for us and for all of these people who use these mats and for others as well. Let us pray. Dear God, we come to you and we thank you that you show us that you are alive. Help us, Lord, to see that and to know that. In your name we pray. Amen. Sometime today, we live in rooms that are locked and homes that are locked. And sometimes we're in fear, terrified of what's going on. Well, what can we learn from this gospel lesson? Do you remember that beginning of that first sentence that I read? While they were talking about this. So what is it that they were talking about? Well, if we go back and look at the verses that come before this, they were talking about those two disciples who had come from Emmaus. That day they had walked from Jerusalem to a village of Emmaus, about seven miles away. And along the way they had been talking with each other and discussing all that had taken place. And then there was a stranger that walked up beside them and engaged them in conversation. And in doing that, in doing that, this stranger began to teach them about the scriptures and about this Jesus and it must be so and they got to Emmaus and it was getting late and he looked like he was going on and they encouraged him to stay that was the Jewish hospitality and so there he was in their home and he took the bread and he broke it and he prayed and immediately they realized it was Jesus and so then he left them. And they ran back. They went back as quick as they could, even though it was late. They had to tell the disciples in Jerusalem. And that's what they were talking about. They weren't the only ones who came back to Jerusalem. All of a sudden, Jesus stood there in their midst. And he began to talk to them. Peace. Peace a reassurance. May this blessing of wholeness and wellness be with you. Look and see. I'm not a ghost. I'm, my feet are planted firmly on the floor. And give me something to eat. So all of those things. Here Jesus is. Tangible. He's really alive and he's really present with them. They could hear him. They could see him. They were invited to touch him. They knew they could smell this broiled fish. They watched him eat it, tasting in their presence. Jesus really was alive in body and in spirit. Remember that refrain that we said earlier? Lord, you never let go of us. Jesus never lets go of those disciples. And they were filled with wonder. Now, William Brown writes about wonder. And he says, on the one hand, wonder carries the unsettling element of bewilderment. But on the other hand, there is this 
element of insatiable curiosity and the desire to know. Immediately after talking to them, Jesus gives them a job. He begins to explain to them the scriptures and how everything that was said in the Jewish scriptures, the Old Testament, was being made full of meaning in him. What a Bible study that would have been. But he continues on. Therefore, because of what all of this has taken place, because of what I have done, therefore, repentance and forgiveness of sins is to be proclaimed in my name to all the nations. And that was to begin with them in Jerusalem. You are witnesses of these things. So don't be afraid to go out of this room. My peace will go with you. Repent of your fear and inaction. Boldly proclaim that gift of forgiveness. Share the good news, the story of what I have done. Can you imagine the wonder that they had? Bewilderment? How is this possible? And curiosity to know what is Jesus going to do next? So what does that mean for us today? Being bewildered and curious at the same time. Well, that job for the disciples has been handed down from generation to generation. Could it be that our words and actions now are one important way that God is tangible? That God is really present in our days it's not the only one but God can be at work through us and in us we can speak the words of the story of Jesus and we can share those words of forgiveness and hope and we can do actions that meet the needs of people touching them where they're hurting we can be the presence of Christ with people today in so many creative ways. This last Monday, I had an opportunity to be a part of that. I had taken my truck in to have some work done on it at uh, the dealership in Tomahawk. And sitting there in the customer service room, I was there while the truck was being worked on. And there was only two other customers that ever came in and stayed any length of time. A few of the service people came through. And Mark certainly came and greeted me several times. But as we sat there, one of the other customers came in and sat down. And she quietly was looking at her phone And it didn't seem like people were greeting her at all. So I came alongside of her. And even though we were strangers, we began to have a conversation. And that conversation went from the the simple things of, do you live here in Tomahawk? And she didn't, and neither did I. And we talked about that. We talked about where we were from. We talked about several different things. And some of them brought us to connections even discussing hair because she was a black woman. And I know from our experience with Carmen, that's not easy to find, hair products or care for hair. And so that went on, but then the conversation got deeper. And we began to talk a little bit about families. And as we did that, she said, It was almost a year ago that her husband died. And we talked about him, and that was such a sudden death. Overnight he died, and when she woke up, he was no longer with her in that way. One month before his death, as the conversation continued, one month before his death, her mother-in-law died. And 
She had been taking care of her mother-in-law in their home. So she had experienced two deaths last year in 2020, one in April, one in May. And she was filled with grief and loss, and she needed to talk. And we talked about faith, and we talked about the journey of grieving. We talked about what it means today and how she was beginning, beginning to heal and stretch, but it was only beginning. A conversation that both of us needed. You see, there is no place where we can go that God is not already there. And God has a mission everywhere. And he invites us to be a part of it. We can do that. And there's room for everyone to participate, each with their unique gifts that are inspired by God. So I invite you to pray. Pray for God to open your eyes to see, to open your ears so that you can hear, to reach out in ways that you can touch and care for another person. Using all of your senses in one way or another. And see what God is doing and can do through the church and beyond. Let us pray. God, we come before you and we give you thanks. We thank you that you are with us to inspire us, to encourage us to use all of our gifts in ways that can serve you. Help us, Lord, to know what they are. Lord, we are living in the midst of a hurting world. Help us. In your name we pray. Amen. I invite you to join me in professing our faith together in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again, he ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. And let us pray. Almighty God, you love the world so much that you sent Jesus to redeem the world. Our world needs your steadfast love and everlasting hope. Guide us in the ways that you are calling us to be witnesses in our daily lives. Help us that we may see ways that we can share your love with others in this time. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Bless those who are Stephen leaders to give them wisdom in preparing and leading this ministry. Raise up people to be trained as Stephen ministers, equipping them to be effective caregivers. Give hope to those who are care receivers. Comfort them in this time of waiting. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Bless all the leaders of government from local to national offices. Give those in national offices wisdom of governing in domestic and international relationships. Let all who are elected to offices be protected from harm. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Enable citizens, government, and businesses to develop a social consciousness toward one another. Help us to act in the best interests of others as we act to protect others and ourselves. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. 
Help all who are seeking to defend people of color in our country from acts of violence. Transform the hearts and minds of those who would harm others. Comfort the families and friends of those who recently died because of various forms of violence. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Thank you for the people who have served and are serving in various branches of our military. Bless all who are wounded, that they may experience your healing and comfort. Bless the families of all who have died in conflict or as a result of their injuries. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Heal the bitter divisions and polarization of views in our country. Guide all of us to listen to those with different viewpoints. Help us to build bridges of understanding so that we can preserve relationships. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Guide our South African companions, including those in the Dinakana Parish. Bless the ministries of Reverend G. R. Monometsi and the members of our sister parishes of Dinakana. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Strengthen all who are troubled, hurting, ill, or recovering from surgery, including Tina, Al, Larry, Corrine, Greta, Jennifer, Irv, Kevin, Michelle, Andy, Rachel, Jeanette, Stuart, Mike, Jack, all others who are on our prayer list, and other people whom we name in our hearts. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Comfort all people experiencing the death of someone close to them. Give us hope and confidence in the resurrection to eternal life including the family and friends of Stephanie Yonke and Aladine Thurs. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Into your hands, O Lord, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. And we join together in praying our Lord's Prayer. Our Our Father, Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy thy kingdom kingdom come. come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. We offer a prayer of thanksgiving for the many gifts that people have given, whether financial or through their actions and work in daily life. Merciful God, our ordinary Mm -hmm. gifts seem Mm -hmm. small for such such a a celebration, celebration, but but you you make of them an abundance, abundance, just just as you do with our our lives. Empower empower us us for service service in your name, in the the strength strength of of the the risen risen Christ. Christ. Amen. Amen. We continue with the thanksgiving for baptism. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, the fountain of living water, the rock who gave us birth, our light, and our salvation. Amen. Blessed are you, O God, maker and ruler of all things. Your voice thundered over the waters at creation. You water the mountains and send springs into the valleys to refresh and satisfy all living things. Through the waters of the flood, you You carried carried those in the ark to safety. safety. Through Through the the sea, sea, you led your people people Israel from slavery to freedom. In the wilderness, you nourished them with water from the rock, and you brought them across the river Jordan to the promised land. By the baptism of his death and resurrection, your son Jesus has carried us to safety and freedom. The floods shall not overwhelm us, and the deep shall not swallow us up, for Christ has brought us over to the land of promise. He sends us to make disciples, baptizing in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Pour Pour out out your Holy Holy Spirit. Spirit, Wash away sin in this cleansing water, clothe the baptized with Christ, and claim your daughters and sons, 
no longer slave and free, no longer male and female, but one with all the baptized in Christ Jesus, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. If you have a bowl of water, or you may uh, get a bit of water after the service, dip your finger in it and make the sign of the cross on your forehead, the sign that was marked at your baptism. And when you do that, remember that you are a loved child of God. We continue now with the blessing of the mats. And these are just a few of the mats that we uh, have been done and are ready to be delivered. I believe there are 16 in all this year. And so let us pray. God, we come before you and thank you. Thank you for all the gifts and skills that people gave in being able to do each step of this process, from cutting the plastic bags to tying them together to crocheting them. Thank you, Lord, for all of that work. Thank you, Lord, that the people who receive them may know that somebody cares about them and help that experience reassure them and give them hope. Draw them closer to you. In your name we pray. Amen. And we pray for the future sending of communion out into our community. Gracious God, we ask that you will raise up people to be assistants in sharing your word and sacrament with those who are sick, homebound, and imprisoned. In your love and care, nourish and strengthen those who will receive this sacrament and give us all the comfort of your abiding presence through the body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord's face shine upon you with grace and mercy. May the Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. A closing song is called Come People of the Risen King. It's a celebration of Christ's resurrection from the dead and asks us all to rejoice, all people, with one heart and one voice, celebrating God's great love for us. Remember the purpose statement at Mount Calvary. Share God's love. Bringing hope to others. Just a few announcements. There is a fellowship time that begins around 1030, and you're invited to join and be a part of that. And I'm going to be away for a couple of weeks, and while that time, if there's a pastoral care need, please call the church office or call the cell phone for Sue Brown or Lori Lynn Lidke. On the worship services next weekend, Shirley Ostrom and Laura Roosh will be doing the phone call worship, and the message will be brought by Pastor Sharon Cook um, that, that she wrote. One of them will be reading that for whoever calls in. On the 25th, the Crossway staff are leading an online worship service. They provided this for all of the churches of the Synod. On May 1 and 2, Shirley Ostrom and Will Ostrom will lead those, and those will be on the phone and online. Alleluia! Christ is risen! Christ is risen indeed! Alleluia! Go in peace! Share the good news! Alleluia! Thanks be to God! Alleluia! Thank you for joining us in worship on this day. <laughs>